Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. I'm Marianne Yemsi. I am a cultural, um, pro cultural consultant and a curator based in Paris. I am very fortunate to have two wonderful artists uh, speaking with me today, Aida Moulouné and Barthélemy uh, Togo. Uh, before I will give a short introduction to this conversation, I would like to warmly thank Art Basel and especially Marie Spirito, the curator of the talk program, for inviting us and for the strong focus on Africa in this year program. I would like to mention that our talk is the last of a series of four talks dedicated to explore the premises and the challenges of Africa in terms of contemporary art and the rise of this continent in the international art market. I would like also to mention uh, the very interesting talk uh, at uh, Art Basel crowdfunding uh, booth um, like organized by Lettere 27. <laughs> Thank you. It is very important to mention all the local initiatives and uh, I would like also to, this panel will uh, pretty much re uh, echoes the one uh, that took place here last Wednesday. Uh, during this conversation, representatives from private and public uh, institutions um, were evoking the perspectives, the difficulties, the new challenges. Well, here we are going to be to go from global to local. That's why I'd like to return on the title of this conversation, which can seem appear a little bit enigmatic. Artist talk cultural producers Africa, to make it clear, Aida and Bartolomé are not going to evoke here their brilliant career, but their commitment as cultural producers in Africa. While this panel will reflect an artist who think and work global and have decided to act local, artists who have decided to implement cultural projects from an African perspective, as part, maybe I think, as a broader commitment to sustainable uh, development. Oh. Uh, I, will, I will first introduce uh, each artist. They are not going to speak about their career, so I will do it for Aida and for Batelemi, and then they will present their projects. We will have a few questions, and then we will invite the uh, audience to ask questions. Uh, maybe before I start, uh, could you launch the images? You will see um, uh, images here. Uh, this is uh, Benjamin Station, but it will be a loop. You know, you will see a few images on Barthélemy's work and installation plus a few images uh, of the life at Benjamin Station. We'll talk uh, uh, about this foundation later on. You will also have a few images of Ida's work as well as uh, a visual from artists that were presented, exhibited at the last edition of Addis uh, Photo Fest. Well, let's start with uh, Ida. Aida's biography. Uh, Ida Miluna is born in Ethiopia. She left the country at a young age and spent an itinerant childhood between Yemen and England. After several years, I think, in a boarding school, uh, you, she finally settled in Canada in 1985. In 2001, Ida received her BA with a major in film from Howard University in Washington, DC. After graduation, she worked as a photojournalist at the Washington Post, but also for other several uh, major publications. As an exist, exhibiting artist, Aida is a 20, 2007 recipient of the European Union Prize in the Rencontre Africaine de la Photographie, uh, the Bamako Encounters in Mali. Uh, she's as well the 2010 winner of the Craft International Award of Photography in Italy. Aida has participated in several international group shows, including Ethiopian Passage, 
dialogues in the diaspora at the Smithsonian's uh, in D Washington DC in 2003. Uh, she has also exhibited at uh, La Havana in Cuba for an exhibition called Imaginous Havana. Aida's work is currently on view at the Smithsonian uh, National Museum of Africa in a show titled Divine Comedy, a very ambitious and innovative exhibition curated by Simon Jamy. She also has a book published uh, by Africalia in Brussels, Belgium, titled Ethiopia Past Forward. This book reflects a vision on reconnecting to Ethiopia through memory. I would say that in her work, uh, Aida often turns her attention to women in the African di diaspora, emphasizing the links and gaps between generations, commemorating the sorrows and celebrating the victories in their lives. As a cultural producer now, Haida has been very active in Ethiopia since her return in her home country after 30 years abroad. She is the founder of and director of the first international photography festival uh, in Africa, the Addis Photo Fest, as well as, but you were going to mention it, I found that very interesting, I, did, I learned about that. Uh, she is also the founder of Fana Foji, Foji, a yearly open call supporting contemporary artists in Ethiopia. Well, the first edition of Addis Photo Fest was launched in 2010, and this festival is moving forward to, towards becoming a key event in the landscape, landscape of African contemporary art and culture. Aida continues to create, to curate and develop cultural projects with local and international institutions through a company, DFA, and you're going to explain later on you know, the aim, the goals of this uh, company. Now you, Bartelemi Togo. Bartelemi Togo is born in, was born in, in Cameroon in 1967. I can mention that. I didn't mention this before either. <laughs> Just, uh, you know, after your prime, uh, after his primary and secondary, secondary schooling in Cameroon, he studied at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Abidjan, Ivory Coast, where he received an academic uh, education in drawing and sculpture. He then, attend, he then attended the Ecole Supérieure d'Art in Grenoble. And the third and final stage of his artistic training took place uh, from 1998 uh, in the pre prestigious Kunst Academy in Dusseldorf. After these years of formation, Barthélemy achieved a significant position in the global art scene, exhibiting extensively. He became a globetrotting artist participating in a number of biennial and triennial events throughout the world, the Dakar Biennial, the Busan Biennial, the Guangzhou Biennial, Triennial, the Thessaloniki Biennial. Well, his work has also been featured in major, many major exhibitions. Uh, this included Hans Ulrich Obrist uh, in 99 for Migrateur, a very interesting, uh, very, a real statement at that period. Uh, Jean-Hubert Martin in 2000 for Partage d'Exotisme at the Lyon Biennale. And Pierre Restani, sorry to mention Pierre Restani in 2001 for Political Ecology in uh, New York at White Box. Uh, he was also part of the celebrated traveling exhibition Africa Remix curated by Simon Jamy. While Bartholomew has constantly extended the range and dimension of his creations using photography, video, installation, printing, performances, and producing works that very freely blend multiple techniques. And uh, for those who have been at the Venice Biennale or for those who are going to attend this Biennale, uh, please do not miss his fantastic, amazing installation uh, titled Urban Requiem. Uh, it, it's in view at the Arsenal in all the world's futures, the show curated by Oakley and Vizor. Bartholomew's reflex, works reflects his concern about the development of his country, his continent, and the earth at the world. And uh, also, he lives in uh, Europe. He has kept continuous contact with Cameroon, his home country. And he has created, in 2004, Banjun Station, which was inaugurated in 2013. 
Ben Jun Station is a non-profit cultural center, and you're going to explain later what, you, what kind of project you have been developing there. So after this long introduction, but it was really important for you to know a little bit of more about oh, their career, if you didn't. I will start with Aida. And uh, Aida and we launched Addis Photo Fest, uh, when was that? Uh, nine years ago or for before? So Yeah, 2000. So why did you start this uh, artistic adventure? So um, just to give everybody an idea, these are the slides that you see. It's a collection of, just to give you a perspective on what we exhibit in the Addis Photo Fest. Um, when I first moved to Ethiopia in 2007, which was right after Bamako Biennale, um, my plan was to be in Ethiopia for three months, but that ended up being eight years. One thing that I realized um, when I arrived back home was um, I started teaching photography, but it didn't make sense to only teach that we also have to showcase work uh, as far as to show our photographers what is the photo scene internationally, not only in the continent and not only in our own country. So based on that, it was really an extension from my teaching um, to also showcase different types uh, of images and also a way to, you know, we have this expression that, you know, we bring the world to Africa and we take Africa to the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, and as a photographer myself, um, I feel the relevance and also the importance of connecting the world through images. And as an Ethiopian as well, uh, you know, there's a lot of cliche images that are in the international market. And this was sort of my objective of shifting how the world sees us. And the only way that can happen is obviously through training and also by having our own photographers understand how to document our own realities. So the Addis Photo Fest was, in a sense, um, a project that I do work on passionately. And I also believe that uh, through this, it has also given visibility for our own photographers and also giving visibilities for Ethiopia. You know, When people realize that there is an international photo festival taking place in Ethiopia, this also shifts how people perceive mm. what kind of culture activities are taking place okay. in our country. You told me when we prepared that conversation that it, uh, and I'd like to know why, is it so important for you to build an international photography festival instead of an African festival? So could you reflect on that? I mean, it's really, um, you know, we're living in a global world. You know, I, I don't think uh, French photographers only exhibit in a French exhibition and so forth and for that you know uh, for my personal work obviously my heritage and my background has an influence on what I choose to document but at the same time I would like you know the world to see my images for the quality of being an artist and my geographical you know locations should be irrelevant so in regards to the photo festival I think that there is a lot of amazing photographers globally and it would be unfortunate to limit the festival to only one region or one continent and also you know this is a conversation that's taking place globally you know right now with social media instagram all these different tools you know we have to find ways that to connect and so for the addis photo fest i felt that it was important that we show images from across the world you know to have these interactions but you also have a ethiopian section during the festival. Why? Yeah, there, there's an Africa section, there's a Middle East section, there's a European <laughs> section, you know. Um, the importance for me for Ethiopia is, you know, we have continuously exhibited images looking at how foreign photographers look at Ethiopia and also how our own photographers look at Ethiopia. And this is again going back to, uh, in a sense, what I consider the, the rebranding of the nation or showing the world, you know, these different perspectives that Ethiopia is not just one thing, it's a very complex place, just as the rest of the countries in Africa. So within that context, um, you know, I'm a big fan of archive images as well. So this is an opportunity to not only showcase the future generation, but also to look at the past. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, you have, uh, you're, you will have in next year, your third edition. And you told me that your goal in each edition is to provide opportunities for, to expose participants and viewers to the various ways uh, in which the image of Africa is projected, interpreted, negotiated, and marketed. Has the format of Addis Photo Fest evolved in the years in order to reach your goal? Can you? 
Well, next year will be actually our, our fourth edition. And um, to me, it's uh, the, the last edition was probably the most ambitious that I've programmed. Uh, we featured 36 countries and around uh, 90 photographers. And again, uh, my foundation is really, um, at the end of the day, is really looking at the image of black people globally. So when we look at uh, the image of African Americans, the diaspora, Africa, it all has the same thread, which is this misrepresentation that exists in the international media. So within that context, I'm working with the foundation of you know, uh, having this conversation. So when we do the festival, it's not just doing an exhibition and inviting people, but it's also having conversations, you know, having discussions, you know, doing portfolio reviews, you know, there are various uh, components within that. But in the end, you know, I would like to have a way of reconnecting uh, and also looking at how these images impact how society deals with the image of black people globally. Yes, this just brings me to, to speak about another aspect. You're doing a lot of workshops. You know, you have your festival, and but, you know, on a daily basis every day. And maybe you will, uh, I would like you to explain what is DESTA, what it stands for. And, uh, well, educational uh, opportunities are also part of your main focus. Why? How do you, you do that? Um, so all these activities are produced through uh, my company called Desta for Africa. Um, we're not an NGO, we're an actual PLC that, um, you know, we pay a lot of taxes to make these events happen. But in the end, um, for me through, you know, through the past uh, few years, one thing that um, I've realized is that when we talk about images, when we talk about cultural production and, and so forth, um, I had to create Dusta, and the, in, in our language, Dusta it means happiness, but it also stands for developing and educating society through art. So from my perspective, I felt that, you know, we have a lot of development happening in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, also across Africa. You know, we have a lot of roads, a lot of bridges, you know, all this infrastructural development, but culture has not been part of development. And I felt that it's relevant that, you know, you can have fancy buildings, but if people are not developed mentally as far as how they relate to these structures or how they relate to this modernity, then to me it's, it's sort of a, a fake uh, development. Mm. So in my conversations, it's really through the company to have these uh, engagements where, you know, culture, I feel, you know, and when I mean culture, I'm talking about art, contemporary art and so forth, that it has to be in the conversation of development uh, within my country for me specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I would like to come back um, on um, what Marie-Cécile Zansou said uh, on Wednesday. Marie-Cécile Zansou is the founder of uh, a foundation, uh, the Zansou Foundation in Benin. And she told us, and we all remember what uh, Sangor said, is that development is 50% uh, economy and 50% culture. So, well, by coming back to the economy and the economy of your organization, and, uh, well, uh, we all know that a lot of um, cultural initiatives in Africa are funded um, by West foreign capital. So... How do you do uh, to make each edition happen, and how do you how do you find your sponsors? How do you do? You know? I mean, uh, first of all, for me personally, you know, I, I call the Addis Photo Fest a beautiful nightmare because it's a very difficult event to produce. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that I've learned uh, being back in Ethiopia is that really culture is also politics at the end of the day. So. Within the context of politics, you know, um, I find it quite ironic that most of cultural funding that happens, you know, in Ethiopia, or you can even look at across Africa, it's really coming from foreign institutions. And again, to me, this goes right back to, you know, uh, if, if funding is coming from foreign institutions, then what is the conversation that's happening as far as what kind of cultural activities that are taking place? So each edition, you know, it's very difficult to find money. Um, this last edition, we decided to deal with the, uh, the corporate companies, which I found to be a much more straightforward uh, relationship. Uh, you know, a lot of the times when we go to the foreign institutions is that everything has to link back to sort of the country of where that institution is coming mm -hmm. back from. And even the amount of budget that we receive, you know, it's really, 
you know, it's not much, you know, but at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is, you know, to have accountability from my own government to invest in cultural activities. And I've had, you know, I've presented in Parliament. I've, you know, I have a close relationship and engaging the government as well, but also to try to uh, have our own local business people to invest in these kind of activities. And well, how do you balance the parameters, uh, priorities and goals with the quest of, for funding and financial stability, yet maintaining integrity in terms of artistic programming? I mean, to me, the, the integrity is the first thing. So, uh, you know, the Addis Photo Fest is produced with very little money. And uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, my driving force or why I do this activity. It's not led by, you know, making money. Obviously, we would, we would all like to make money from it, but that's not the first priority. You know, the first priority is really to show that with a very limited budget that we can control our own festival and, and we're able to do a programming that has relevance for our own community. And this is, again, again the conversation that, uh, that I'm having with the audience. So within that context, um, you know, uh, living in Ethiopia, you know, it's not, uh, you know, there's poverty, there are many things and so forth. But at the end of the day, uh, this is just to show that Addis Photo Fest is a template that anyone can produce this in any part of Africa, regardless of whether you have money or no money. You know, this is just to show that if you work and feel passionate about something that it's all possible, you know, and obviously for the future goal, what I'm looking for is a self-sustainable system and a self-sustainable festival mm -hmm. that we're not dependent on foreign, foreign funding, funding. Mm -hmm. because if the foreign funding is not there or if they're not happy with the political, um, you know, landscape, mm -hmm. then that funding is mm -hmm. gone. And this mm -hmm. is what I feel that as cultural production in Africa is that we have to move towards an independent format mm -hmm. where we're able to stand on our own two feet. Very interesting. It's quite a transition with Patelimi because, uh, well, I have a quote where you said, we African do not have the luxury of surrender, of complaining and waiting. It is essential for us to find our own solution in all areas, cultural, politic, economy, agricultural, health, everything. In order to do that, we must set up innovative structures in order to stimulate creativity and the desire of culture. I get that this was the vision behind the creation of Benjamin Art Station. Can you further explain and describe the most innovative nature of this foundation? <coughs> um, okay. I mean, there. And other yet, I would like to point out the fact that Benjun Station, maybe you should explain where is Benjun first, yes. because it's not in the capital. I mean, it's, uh, you put difficulties on top of other difficulties by going out of the capitals. I could have been in Yaoundé or Douala, you know, the main cities in Cameroon, but you decided to go really inland, very far, far away. Very far. <laughs> yes, after my studies in Dusseldorf, I come back to Paris, where I find my studio. And one day, I was thinking in my studio that uh, I am traveling, I do my job, I make my art, I am happy, but Africa need me. Africa need us as African diaspora. We must do something for our country, for our continent, and then you know, I make 10 years studies, Ivory Coast, four years, Grenoble in France, four years, and Dusseldorf Academy, two years. I think I have something to give back to Africa. And I, I was preparing one show in the Palais de Tokyo. I decided to stop to prepare this show. I, I, and then I traveled to Cameroon because I was thinking, I think that moment that Africa have two loss. We lost our classic art, African classic art, not our premier, as they say, our premier or our negre. I call that African classic art. We lost all that from our continent. And the second loss, it is our production as African contemporary art. It was the second loss. And then I decided to build something in Africa. 
And that time I start to make the exchange between African artists and me. Slowly, slowly, day by day, I think I cannot in the future going to show just African artists. It is better to continue the exchange with international artists, with Western country artists, and then the collection so started to... Was, yeah, that was your collection there, and that, went to, that was meant to be uh, on show at Benjun Station, because you have to say that Benjun Station is the museum, but it's also a residency place, and it's much more. So, and you literally build Benjun Station with your hand. You told me it's not that I had like hundreds of locals building Benjun. You were really, really involved in that. So, could you yeah, the, explain? I was, inside it was the building, I was inside the building up all yeah. day during mm. four years. I was there, mm. and during four years we built mm. this high building, 23 meter high. It's not uh, an an old building or uh, or a rail station no oh. we built from yeah. the basement mm. until the 33 height meter mm -hmm. and the, the 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 basement it is for video film mm. the first the ground floor mm -hmm. is for library mm -hmm. the first floor and second floor is for exhibition mm -hmm. contemporary exhibition and the last floor is for permanent collection come from exchange that I, mm. I, I, I do with Af uh, artists mm. and collector. Mm. That and is the outside, you have a large, large place outside where artists can train, produce. The, the outside look like um, space, uh, theater space. Yeah, you call it a without, theater space. Without yeah. roof. Mm. And mm. we make a concert, mm. poetry, and the second building is for studios and apartment mm. for apartment mm. for for artists. Mm. And at the same time, I combine a second project with agriculture. Yeah, this is something really incredible. So can you? That's why you'll see. Uh, yeah, those, this is the image they hear. Come. That's uh, the Venice Biennale installation. You will see few more images, but after when you'll see Benjamin Station. See that most, I mean, four images, we chew them together, are um, showing, uh, I think there's coffee plantation, Corn, and also beans, beans, banana. And then, so, but, well, this is not that you have on one side the Benjamin Station, the foundation, the residency program, and on the other side, the agricultural project for you. And I remember you have always combined uh, and we run, I will say agricultural or environmental issues uh, with, I would say, uh, social and political and artistic uh, issues. So can you explain? Because it's really connected, it's really combined. Um, I think... Um I, I read when I was in grammar school uh, um, a writer, a French writer, Albert Camus, mm -hmm. the, role, the role of an artist. Mm -hmm. And since that time, I think I have a role in our society as an artist. Mm -hmm. I can, it's, 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 it's true that I can do a critical artwork, but at the same time, I must try to give a solution about what I I critical. I, mm. I, I, I'm not, uh, yes, uh, the so position. So it's kind of political statement as well, you know. Yes, and, and the response uh, about this, this situation was to, to travel and to, to do a concrete, concrete, mm things. Mm. The, that was, I create uh, Banjun Station, that was, I make the project with um, coffee uh, to, to criticize the, the exchange between North and South mm. uh, in the international market, how cost the, 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 
the, the, the coffee mm. on the international in the international market. Mm. That was we pro, our product mm. product. We're going to package that is an example and, and give our price yeah, on the market. And coming, yes, it's great. And coming back to Africa, it's also you told me it's also to show that we can be self-sufficient. We can be self-sufficient. Yes. I remember. So it's always both. I mean, you combine like it's an artistic gesture, but it's also it it means a lot more. Uh, I remember your piece at the recent, I mean, Dakar Biennial. Can you explain what it, it was? It I was fantastic. It you created the map of Africa. Like I create a map of Africa, like, like a plantation, oh. and then I make grow beans, oh. and slowly, slowly, during two weeks before the opening, oh. the, the beans start to grow. Yeah. And the population could come and take the beans for, you know, for them. During the harvest. During, during the and harvest. Then I give and back, like, mm. I give back to, mm. to people the, the harvest, because my dream is to make art in Africa, but mm. to give the give back to the people, to the community, uh, our harvest, mm -hmm. to give them back to eat mm -hmm. before we make art. Yeah, and coming back about the local was community, how was that at the beginning, you know, in Benjamin Station, far, far away from the capital, seeing, you know, this strange guy coming, building a museum, you know, how, how did they react at the w beginning? Why so far? Because I come from... Um, a cultural region in Cameroon okay. where the Bamileke uh, uh, keep oh. the culture. Yeah, that's true. It's yeah, true. it's different than another part oh. of Cameroon. Oh. And there, my dream was to make a wedding between traditional art with contemporary art. Oh. And then I, the place was a perfect place mm -hmm. To, to create Banjun Station there, it was not because I am Bamileke, you know. Mm. It was to create a, a, a wedding between the, those two cultures in this region. Mm. You don't, you have not so far uh, Bamun, the Bamun mm. sculpture is very famous. Yeah. And all those area, you have African fabric, mm. you have a dance mm. and some traditional mm. culture. Mm. Uh, it was yeah, good for me to build Banjun mm. Station mm in mm. West Cameroon. Mm. That was the, the reason. Mm. Uh, but, it, but it's very far from, Cam from airport, uh, yeah. capital, it's 300 kilometer. Mm. Mm. And, and how do you, do? You, ha you, you have a lot of workshop with kids. I think we, we selected one image. It's so funny because I saw picture was they were all with their uniforms, you know, listening yeah. at you first and then, you know, working with, Teachers Children. and so, how do they react to contemporary art? Is it easy? How do? Well, you know, when the building up was was finished, I take five years to learn to the people sure. what we're going to do inside mm. this tiny, <laughs> nice building because the people was thinking that it's not our place. It's for mm. Western country mm -hmm. people. It was for the white people, mm. and then during five years, I create. Um, open days there. Uh -huh. In in those open days, we make funerary there because the Bamileke people <laughs> like funerals. Funeral, yeah, how to bring them inside? And funerals, that's very important. Exactly. How to bring them inside <laughs> Banjun Station? It, it is good <laughs> it's a bit to, <laughs> to take something yeah. of their culture that mm. they like mm. and then to bring that inside Banjun Station. Mm. Then the funerary, the wedding. The um, birthday, uh, mm. all those mm. kind of mm. things that the people like yeah. in my village. And yes, how do you finance all these activities? Oh, yes, you is, told me. So, yeah, yeah. It's Tell very me. difficult be because the Banjun Station opened officially 2013. Mm. Since 2008, that Banjun Station exists. I never have one one cent. No support from no support. the government, and I pro I pay all with my bank mm. card, mm. and it is you know Gilbert and George say we must be a given person, generosity. Mm. 
and I try to give back the money that by my art I, I, I have, I give that back to my continent, to my country. And until today, I never have a grant. I never have uh, help. Mm. Perhaps in the but future. But how are your relationship with, uh, you know, people from the culture, uh, with your government? Uh, do they know that uh, pension exists? What? You know, in Africa, they think they have another priority. It's true. Mm. But in Banjun Station, I think the same like that. We have another priority. It's food. It's give to the people something to eat. That was we are doing there. But secondly, the people need to be educated. The people mm. need to, to be educated in art too. That was, I invite you, should, you see the, the, the teenager uh, inside Banjun Station for a mm. workshop, drawing workshop. Mm. We buy Kiki Smith drawing. And to bring them inside Banjun Station was not easy because the people was thinking it's a magical place where all uh, sec how, I don't know how to say. I don't know. Say mauvais esprit, is that we say in French or in Africa? So they were they afraid of. The people are superstitious, mm. you know. Oh, they they see all my drawing around Banjun Station, and they start to have a fray because they was thinking is is a place where we make some bad practice practice. Oh. Inside, and one day we have a visit of uh, minister of culture and some authorities there. And since that time, the people understand that it's one place to have education by art, because the white people and the the official people was in Banjun Station, mm -hmm. and that time they decide to come inside Banjun Station. At the beginning, it was not so easy. They were, they were thinking by those big drawings with sex, with uh, head, cutting head, with blood around Banjun Station. It's my universe, art mm. universe. Mm. And I draw that around Banjun Station. So before we open the question to the public, I have a very last question to both of you. So how, would you, how do you define yourself with all these activities? You're an artist? as entrepreneur uh, or say as activist so how how do you what would you say Ida please <laughs> I mean I, I, I always consider myself to be an artist and you know uh, I get this question a lot of why as an artist I choose to do these projects but I feel that this is an extension of my own self-expression. You know, these are the things that are still connected to my artwork and these are things that also inspire me. So for me, it's uh, in, in a technical category, you know, I'm considered a cultural entrepreneur or a social entrepreneur. But uh, for me, the foundation goes back to being an artist and feeling passionate about uh, the activities. And you? I think, I just me. think that I try to, to do my job and to, to do something for Africa because uh, our continent needs the first African people mm -hmm. in each speciality. I have uh, a knowledge in art world. Mm -hmm. I must give back this, yeah, knowledge, this knowledge to Africa. Mm -hmm. If you, as, an, as African, African, you have knowledge in science or medicine, you must give back something to your country. So it might be the, the, the sign of a change because both of you have spent so many years abroad and now you're coming back to give something. Uh, that's, um, am I right? Yeah. To give, share something, create new, new opportunities, new, new, uh, new visions also, to bring new visions, new knowledges into Africa. Is that right? Yes, of course. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really, um, you know, we're always complaining about, you know, there's a brain drain in Africa. And to me, the solution is to go back and, you know, okay. brain gain. Okay. So do we have questions in the audience? Yes. Please. My name is Kofi. Uh, 
those in the diaspora who've decided to come back home. Um, those of us who live at home, and most of the time, but they still spend some time in the West in here, and we try to do something back home. Like you began, uh, Tego, about how even the government received you. One problem I really, really find is our institutions, that is the Ministry of Culture, the government, and so on, add as you see it, add as this area you want to go and teach the people, they don't find it a priority. So my question is, what initiative are you going to take because of the suffering you have gone through to do your bandung, what you are trying to do in Addis Ababa, what can you get the official people with the budget, with the money, to come on board in one way or the other? I mean, for, for, for my end, you know, uh, when we talk about contemporary art in Addis Ababa, um, I spent about five months in meeting at the Ministry of Culture and Tourism about four years ago to present to the late Prime Minister Madla Zanawi in regards to the role of art and culture uh, within our society. And the one thing that I realized and why, from my perspective, you know, when, when you talk about your audience and when you talk about your stakeholders, I think it's really important that you have all your stakeholders engaged in the activities that you're doing. So from my end, you know, the first step was for them to understand, you know, what is a festival, what is art, uh, and this hasn't been difficult. You know, it took me almost seven years to finally have an official from, you know, imagine not from the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, but from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, to come and understand what we're doing and also to be the official opening, you know, to be part of the opening ceremony. So a lot of the times, you know, one thing that I've seen uh, in Addis Ababa is that, you know, there is a disconnect between the audience, between the artists, and also between the government. But this conversation cannot happen just by, you know, it's not a passive thing, it's an active thing. So from, you know, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, they know me that I'm, I'm going there continuously to get them engaged. And now the first step has been, uh, we've succeeded in having them engaged. Now the next step is for them to invest in these kind of activities. So it's a long road and I'm sure it's the same thing in Cameroon or any part of Africa. But again, this goes back to as artists that we have to be the ones that are knocking on the door and opening the door and getting in. This is the only way that you're gonna have change. And even when you talk about advocacy, you know, for example, you know, uh, taxation is a major issue in Ethiopia. You know, artists should not be taxed, in my opinion. But this change cannot happen unless we are the ones that are having these conversations. You know, it, it's not a passive uh, approach. So from my end, this is how I've been working in Ethiopia. And as far as the government being involved, now uh, last year they started doing an annual art festival from the Ministry of Arts and Culture. So they, now they see the value of why, you know, cultural events are needed, uh, you know, in, not only in the city, but also in the country. So I've seen change coming. It's slow, but it's, it's been happening. Mm. But maybe the situation is a bit more complex in Cameroon, I, I would say, because, you know, with Mr. Paul Bia, uh, it's not a government that is, you know, would shine for, um, you know, encourage the freedom of speech and all this so is that do you think that is that is that do you have possibilities to do what you want and to you know and in Cameroon I never or? have a problem in my country to do to create Banjun station mm. uh, art space but the government know the project and but they don't help financially the project. They don't have the money. They say they don't have the money for that. But they, they, they know by, by, by the media who is the guy he, who, he create this art project. And they have a respect about that. Because I don't try to go in against the politics in Cameroon. I think the last the, the idea of the of my big brothers from Africa, from 1960, was to fight 
with the government, with the, the, the politics. Mm. And then they didn't win. They never win this fighting together. I think if you are Cameroonian or another country from Africa, it's better to have an idea and to go through your idea, to do your idea, and to forget the po politics because you're going to lose. They have uh, weapons. They have all the technique, all the practice to, to, or to kill you. And I think my life is as important. I think the concept to be given person, to be like a given person is more important for me to give my energy to a positive, positive, uh, um, uh, pro positive project than to fight with the political, local politics. You're going, you're going to lose. You are, you are, you are alive. You are, you, you are children. You are. You understand. Thank you. Do we have other questions? Yes, please. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Gustav. I have also some background from Cameroon. So this, I came here today because two of my friends kind of invite me and. I'm really um, touched by what I saw today. Um, I think I'm really admired about the work you're doing in, in Cameroon because um, even though the country is, I mean, the president and the government is not supporting you, I think by people, the way how you touch people, maybe that will make the way, you know, will uh, create Grow. a kind of dynamic Yeah we will make everything happen, happening here. Yeah. And I think this is the kind of positive messages is to how to find, how to, um, to make people aware of the culture, aware of what they have there. And that's exactly what you're doing. You use what we have as a, as a culture, as a color, as an influence to create this. And this is really beautiful. So thank you very much, you both. It's, it's beautiful what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thank you for coming and thank you again, Art Basel, uh, for this invitation and uh, enjoy the fair. <laughs>